we are going to use a drag and drop image option. So I'm going to click on add and then add new question and we're going to scroll down and we're going to use this bottom option here, drag and drop onto an image. We'll look at the other marker option and the intertext option in another video. If I select that option, then click on add, we can then start by giving the question a title and obviously then putting some question text in. So what we are going to do with this is we're going to correctly identify parts of a cell. Now I've already got an image ready, which is this. And what we're going to be able to do is drag in text labels onto the cells here. If I scroll down a little bit and I go into this preview here, I can click, drag and drop that image. And what it'll do is it will insert that image there for me. Now, by default, it'll always make this image to a fixed size. The reason for that is that there's a number of different devices that you could access this system on. So, for example, some people may have a mobile phone, some might have a tablet, some may have laptops, PCs. So there's a fixed size here. Next, we need to add on draggable items. So I'm going to expand my draggable items option and we're going to look at the first part here. Now, we could, if we wanted to, have images on here. So we could drag on different images as part of the labeling, but we're not. We're going to use text boxes. So the first thing that I'm going to do is change this option here from type down to draggable text. And then in this text, I'm going to put the answers. Now, there is something that you need to try to think of. It's this at the top here where we shuffle the items every time. Otherwise, if you put them in order and they're in order on your diagram, then it makes the question a little bit too easy. So we're going to repeat that process again now for our, the next one. So we're just going to select from this type, draggable text. I'm going to put the next option in. And again, we're going to repeat the process another two or three times to make sure we've got enough items. Once you've got enough items on here, we can then collapse this menu and then expand the drop zones. Because the drop zones will allow us to specify where we want these options to sit. So if I expand the drop zones and then select this option here, drag a blight them and then select nucleus. What you're going to find is it's going to add nucleus now to the bottom here. And as I add the others, it's just going to add them in on top of each other. So we've got our four here and I need now to position them onto my work. So if I click drag and drop, what it started to do is it started now to put a coordinate here for my drop zones. And as I drag these on, you can see it is allowing me now just to move them all on. Now as a quick tip, the size of box Although obviously nucleus here is small and cytoplasm is a little bit bigger, but it'll always show you the largest box that you've got. So when we preview this uh, question type, they're all going to be the size of cell membrane. Obviously, otherwise pupils are going to just be able to guess where it goes based on size. Now, what I typically do is after I've added these in, I'll normally go in manually here then and just make sure that they are the same so they all look quite neat. Once you've done that, don't forget to tag it. And then click Save Changes. Now when we preview this option, this quiz now will have a few different options here. So you can see these now are draggable markers and as we go into it, you can see they are allowing me, they light up and they allow me to drop things in. And if we take them back out again, as an example, they'll go back then in the bottom. Now, one last thing you need to think of with this type of question and any others that you have more than one answer on. When you are giving points out, obviously this part, this question here is four 
correct parts to it. So what we can do is we can change this by clicking the little pencil icon and we can then put four in and press enter. That then will award that question four marks, one mark for every correct. Otherwise, what it'll do is it'll award a decimal value. So as an example, if it was still set to one, it would award 0.25 for every correct answer.